Our reading this morning is from the letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Being part of a musical ensemble is a fantastic experience, especially the really large groups, orchestras and bands and big choirs. Sometimes the songs have 30 or more parts, all weaving together in harmony and counterpoints. The end result is far greater than the sum of its parts and getting to be in the middle of it, participating in it, it's a lot of fun. (laughs) That's also why it can sometimes be disappointing when it's time to practice. Once you've heard all 30 parts together, pulling out the one piece seems lacking. Even if you have the melody or an important part, it loses so much of its power by itself. For over a decade, I played baritone sax and band, one of the, the baseline instruments that Uh, with the tubas helped put the power and foundation under the rest of the band. In concert together, it was this essential driving force underneath the music. By myself, it was mostly just holding out long low notes without much else happening. I think this passage hints at something similar. Too often we approach the Christian life like these discrete pieces we can pull apart. We treat it like a buffet where we can pull out and enjoy just the parts that we like. But it's more like a symphony. The pieces of the Christian life harmonize and they amplify each other. They renew and support and motivate. At first our verses look like a kind of explosion of Christian language. Paul is referencing so many things at once. But there's a reason. Those elements all flow together. We rejoice in God's presence. Our rejoicing leads us to acting out God's love in our lives. We live fearlessly because we offer up our needs and our worries in prayer. And this allows us to have freedom and security in Jesus. It's not meant to be pulled apart. If you pray without joy, if you pray without the presence of Jesus or a life of love, it will be emptier. If you try to act in love without prayer and the peace of God's presence, it will fall flat. If you seek peace and security apart from living a life of love and prayer in God's presence, it will be lacking. It's only when all the pieces are in harmony that we find ourselves complete and thriving in God.